Yes, I will, I will just show you one study wherein, wherein we have applied NNMGP and some very interesting conclusions probably uh, can also be seen out of that. This study pertains to application of ANN and GP to estimate uh, the coastal sediment transport. Now, as some of you may be aware that the waves generated by the wind, which is a continuously occurring phenomenon in the sea, they break when they come to shore because they cannot sustain their motion in shallow waters. Uh, because of that, a current is produced uh, which has a component parallel to the coastline. Now, this current carries a lot of sediment in it. Now, when such uh, sediment movement which is parallel to the coast crosses a ch uh, deep channel uh, which is used for the ships to navigate inside and outside the harbour, they deposit that sediment load, lot of uh, material gets deposited and uh, ports and harbours, they spend tremendous amount of time every year in dredging out that material. In fact, in India, we spend, I don't know, maybe uh, more than a uh, couple of thousands of crores of rupees per year in all these ports and harbour to dredge out that material. So, the estimation of that uh, sediment that gets deposited is indeed necessary so that in port budgets you can keep that much money for dredging uh, in the next year and so on. So, accurate estimation of siltation is indeed necessary and uh, but this is very difficult because the phenomena involved are indeed very complex. Now, currently what is done, there are only empirical formulae which are uh, popularly used to estimate that sediment transport and uh, therefore, we try to see whether we can get good results by uh, GP and ANN. But as I mentioned, ANN cannot be just applied like that because it suffers from some problems like la lack of guarantee uh, of success in a new uh, problem, new application. Accuracy levels obtained are arbitrary and you have to go on perfecting it. There are also a difficult choice of training schemes, architecture, the learning algorithms, very controlled parameters, etc. And therefore, any new application of ANN must address this issue and then present the results to the uh, scientific community. Now, therefore, in this project, we tr our objective was to develop a suitable neural network to obtain the uh, uh, longshore sediment transport rate, LSTR, longshore sediment transport rate. We also wanted to understand the processing of the input done by ANN and done by regression and also physical consistency. We also wanted to develop estimation procedures on other soft tools like GP and if necessary, we wanted to explore possibility of developing hybrid models. Now, as I mentioned, traditionally there are certain design, uh, there are certain formulae which the design codes recommend. Recommends. One is such regression formula given by Coastal Engineering Research Manual, another one is Walter and Bruno equation, third one is energy flux method. They all relate the outcome to the causative variables in an empirical manner. Now, uh, we have collected data, one of the co-authors of this paper have collected data along the uh, coast of Karwar here, this is that Arge beach. This is a 4 kilometer long coast and in that coast in the field for about 4 months, they collected, uh, he collected the data from February 90 to May 90 of significant wave heights, average param wave period, breaking wave height, breaking wave angle, the width of surf zone, mean sediment diameter, longshore current and so on. And of course, the sediment was also collected in order to know its rate Q per unit time. This is a typical mesh trap to collect the sediments. Now, we had to discard a large amount of data because all these values were not simultaneously available at many times and ultimately we ended up with only 81 uh, data uh, examples. Now, note that these 81 examples are look short, but in field it is very, very difficult to collect all these uh, variables by means of instruments which are indeed very costly and very difficult to operate simultaneously. Now, to begin with, we developed a simple network wherein the input for all was the causative parameters, the output was the rate of sediment transport. It gave us fairly good measure, uh, good kind of performance during testing. That means with respect to those data sets which were not seen by the network in training. This is the predicted uh, so rate of sediment transport. This is observed rate of sediment transport. In general, the correlation coefficient and mean absolute error and root mean square error were quite uh, uh, fair. Then we are based on the data set that we newly obtained, we also fitted some regression equations uh, like this. And when we compared all these results, we found that uh, by manipulating with the networks properly, we can get a good uh, network having fairly uh, good amount of uh, performance criteria, the correlation coefficient, root mean square error, mean absolute error compared to the multiple linear regression and non-linear regression of different types. Uh, but of course, within the neural network itself, certain training uh, schemes can give you even much better uh, results. 
now again it is not there is no guarantee that use of some particular network is going to give you, always give you a better uh, kind of result you have to try out all these training schemes and network architecture but the point that is to be noted is something like this that when we compare the uh, values of rate of sediment transport predicted by uh, formulae uh, advocated by design codes and the actual rate of sediment transport we got this picture where we expected all values to fall on this along this line of exact fit but if we use one formula crc formula this is the picture that emerges if we use another formula this is the picture that emerges in fact certain negative values are also predicted meaning that the drift is in the different direction uh, negative direction so like that first of all we ensured that the existing formulae at the given location of the, that carvar uh, uh, are definitely not good you have to go by the new uh, formulations new formulations could be neural net because neural network gets substantially high uh, level of accuracy compared to these existing ones then uh, so accordingly we recommended the network then we also ensured as i mentioned that uh, the neural networks behaves in a consistent manner with the physics of the phenomenon as the wave height increases uh, increases the uh, rates of this uh, sediment transport also the uh, increases now yes now then another study that we did is like this that we did a parametric variation with respect to traditional regression and also parametric variation with respect to neural network and that gave us some insight as to why regressions fail and why neural networks excel as you can see here in this particular uh, figure wherein we have plotted the uh, sediment transport rate with significant wave height uh, both uh, process as by ann and by regression and in, in this next figure we are uh, we have plotted the rate of sediment transport against the increasing breaking wave height and uh, using the ann and regression and in both case cases we are finding that when it comes to regression you know the regression tries to Uh, do some kind of very rigid approximation to the input whereas here there is a lot of flexibility in modeling so neural networks tries to i mean the traditional regression tries to pass the data through some very constricted path whereas lot of de uh, degrees of freedom are available when it comes to the neural network uh, so neural networks invariably enjoy what we call a high degrees of freedom in processing and that's why they perform better so similar conclusions were drawn by other uh, variables yes then another uh, thing that we did is like this uh, neural networks gave better results than regression but even then it is still possible to go at a higher level then what we did we developed a basic network using the training set of data then we uh, repeated the training by uh, attaching another network in series form to it so the idea was that this network will do the basic function approximation and fine tuning can be done by another network later because by doing by giving a network like this you bring in additional uh, you know flexibility in a, uh, uh, to the uh, data modeling and that work again very nice the correlation coefficient again substantially improved compared to the single uh, stage neural network then many times you know these are these uh, things are used by field engineers if you if you talk about neural networks etc they may not be very receptive so what we did uh, considering the fact that some this uh, non linear regression uh, results may also be acceptable to some level we try to give a couple equation that combines the input of the regression and then uh, computes the output with the help of neural network and such an equation based on a couple form is given over here and that also works fine but not as fine as the uh, pure neural network or two stage neural network then we applied the genetic programming and we found that it gives results similar to a uh, good well trained neural network this is the graph of predicted uh, sediment transport rate with the observed uh, rate predicted was uh, calculated using the genetic programming then again we did so many things to see if we end up with some better results we trained the model using nn and results of that trained model were used as input uh, to develop a genetic programming uh, and uh, obtain the output of the rate of sediment transport accordingly and uh, these are the uh, results first we did training uh, using gp primary training and fine tuning using nn 
we here we did uh, fine uh, primary training using ANN and fine tuning by GP. And we found that all these methods also give uh, results which are definitely, I mean, they are not an order of magnitude big than greater than the ANN, but uh, consistently they were found to be better than a single ANN. So, this is what we found. So, our, uh, if somebody wants to take a cue from it and applies to uh, and wa wants to apply the same uh, combined or hybrid modeling in his own case, he will find some good elements of his, uh, uh, I mean, some good uh, hints out of this study. Now, these uh, locally material learning actually belong to a class of models which are called local models. Now, so far, this ANN and others, we have seen that they are global models in that, you know, you uh, take the, uh, you develop a model with the help of trained data and continuously use the same model. Here, uh, these are local models in the sense that whenever any new input is given, they will find out which are the, uh, they will pick up the um, re related data from the input database and using some criterion and apply a local model to it and then use it to obtain the output from that new input. So, this uh, uh, local evaded learning belongs to th that class of models called local models which are different than global models in that there is no single model that fits to the all data. Then the local models fit data into a region uh, which is called uh, around the location of the new input or query point as it is called. So these are, there are certain terminologies which are traditionally used by those mathematicians or uh, you know control theory people. Now, this local evaded lear uh, learning is a memory based learning in that it does not discard the training data like ANN, but it makes use of uh, every data uh, or part of data, data every time in making a new learning. So, learning is rather incremental here. It is non-parametric that means from the data you do not work out the prime parameters for once for all and use these parameters, but every time you do some kind of incremental learning over and above what you have done so far and uh, uh, locally linear models are selected and fitted. Now, so basically what, what is done is like this. So, suppose this is the new input x. Then uh, in locally weighted regression, we, uh, we using some kernel function like the Gaussian function as, uh, as you can see here. This is a Gaussian uh, kernel function. This x is input uh, variable and this ck and dk are the two parameters, centers and distance metric. Distance metric could, uh, could be uh, typically a Euclidean distance metric roots uh, square root of x equal plus y square. Uh, so, like that, using these kernel functions, you uh, this is a typical kernel function shape. This is a plan you can say. So, for a new query point or new input, you identify the training patterns which are closed. Then, uh, to those uh, um, identified uh, local uh, points, you fit a regression and use it to obtain the output. This is, I mean, conceptually it is like this. Then you have a class of locally weighted regression models called locally weighted projection mo uh, 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 models in which the input data are mathematically projected into these orthogonal or perpendicular directions and along each direction a linear model is fitted after identifying the required points with the help of these kernels and average of all these is ultimately used to obtain the output. So, the things that here are indeed extremely complicated and the mathematics involved is uh, uh, quite involved, uh, is quite uh, um, complex to explain, but conceptually uh, the things involved are like this. Now, so far two of our students have used this technique again to solve similar problems, estimation of coastal sediment transport rate from the causative parameters and estimation of uh, score depth of a ski jump bucket. So, this is the same problem which I was mentioning, the data near Karwar was were taken. Uh, the input in this case was significant wave height period, width of surf zone, breaking wave height and the output parameter was uh, rate of sediment transport and you, as you can see this is the predicted versus the observed uh, sediment transport rate, this is the exact fit line. That means, had the data been perfectly predicted, all points would lie along this line. Uh, we got a good correlation coefficient which is 0.88 comparable to usual NN, uh, but again you know we have to go on refine this technique and see whether we, it can give results which are more acceptable than NN or not. 
then of course they work much better than this traditional techniques recommended by design code that is the definitely the advantage <coughs> so the we found that the locally weighted regression techniques they produce more accurate estimation of the rates of sediment coastal sediment transport than the traditional formulae another application of this lwpr technique is the estimation of score downstream of a spillway again the same kind of uh, data uh, observed in the field and models was used the this is the maximum score depth it is to be related to this head then this discharge radius of bucket lip angle uh, etc and uh, as regards field data were concerned there were only uh, measurements of discharge and head uh, used to obtain the uh, depth of score in fact the uh, that us uh, our indian standard code recommend only uh, use of this q and h1 to find ds uh, for generalization purpose uh, when we use these two parameters we found that lwpr results in about 0.9 uh, co uh, correlation coefficient during testing and uh, it works better than the traditional formulae if we use the model data where apart from discharge and head radius mean sediment diameter then lip angle and then uh, the other uh, tail water depth dw uh, were used at input and that significantly uh, you know improved the relationship we got a correlation coefficient of 0.97 so it means that uh, the um, practice uh, that is uh, followed in design code of using only discharge and head to obtain the uh, score depth is no good you must include other parameters also in order to get a better estimation of the Mm, score depth. So this shows the relative comparison between the results of uh, locally weighted projection irrigation, uh, then the best trained ANN, and uh, the pa formulae used by different investigators in field like Martins, Veronese, Wu, Inseed. A new statistical regression was also fitted. That also di that didn't work much better. So right now we can say that LWPR PR results are comparable to that of uh, artificial neural networks. Maybe if we are able to refine this technique further, we can they can go one step beyond it and also. But uh, right now we have to keep the fingers crossed. So we are only saying that the score prediction could substantially improve if the LWPR PR regression technique is used in place of the traditional formulae. So like that, uh, so many studies have been made with respect to this GPMT and uh, so on.